A word about Professor Subhanga Choudhury. Uh, Professor Subhanga Choudhury is the head of um, Department of Endocrinology. Um, and uh, he is the immediate past president of Endocrinological Society of India, founder patron of South Asian Federation of Endocrine Societies, and he is a member of annual meeting screening committee of ICE and ENDO 2004. Over to Dr. Choudhury. Thank you very much for this kind words of introduction. And thank you, Dr. Muthu, Dr. Krishna, for providing me this opportunity to interact. Uh, this has been an excellent meeting. Uh, what we now discuss, we, we discussed about diabetes and other major issue in pregnancy is, of course, thyroid disorder. And uh, at least till such time that babies are connected to the mother by the umbilical cord and the placenta, we need to bother about thyroid function in the mother. Maybe a day will come when we'll have Bluetooth connectivity, but the day hasn't come. And so mother's thyroid function is extremely important, not only for the well-being of the mother, but also for the well-being of the fetus. And uh, so what we'll try and uh, discuss in the course of the next 20 minutes or so is, first of all, just an overview of the importance of thyroid function in pregnancy. What are the normal changes that occur in pregnancy, which makes the interpretation of thyroid function tests a little bit more tricky than otherwise. There are issues with thyroid hormone measurements, including measurement of free thyroxine, which in the past, maybe 10 years back, we thought we should be solving our problems by taking recourse to free thyroid hormone measurement and not the total hormone measurement, but there are problems there as well. And then uh, whether we should be coming up with our own trimester specific ranges of normalcy is uh, what we need to think about and get our act together and maybe a, a couple of specific pregnancy related conditions affecting the thyroid. So we all know that the fetal thyroid sort of starts to develop at about 11, 12 weeks and it starts to function independent of the mother around 20 weeks of gestation. Till that time, it's transfer of maternal thyroxine through the fetoplacental unit to keep the babies, to maintain the well-being of the baby and also to take care of the early brain development of the fetus. But even beyond that, uh, natural experiments like congenital hypothyroidism because of our genesis of the thyroid in the fetus is associated uh, uh, usually with a normal brain development till the time of delivery, which suggests that even beyond uh, the initial few weeks, mother's thyroxine can be transferred to the baby when required and, and, and help in its uh, brain development in particular. And we all know that if you have hypothyroidism in pregnancy, there are a number of issues, uh, anemia, pregnancy-induced hypertension, even gestational diabetes seems to be more common, and growth retardation, intrauterine fetal death, all are more common if a uh, mother has hypothyroidism in pregnancy, and also the baby, even after birth, has somewhat higher chances of neonatal complications, lower APGAR scores, and so on. And on the other hand, uh, hyperthyroidism also affects the mother and also the baby uh, uh, in, in a number of ways, stillbirth, low birth weight, goiter, and so on. Even the, by transfer of antibodies from the mother to the baby, you can have a hyperthyroidism, which is transient in the baby as well. Now let's uh, uh, come to a young woman, 26 year old, goes to the gynecologist because of irregular periods, Physical examination is non-contributory. Thyroid function test is uh, requested, asked for quite commonly in these days, and it suggests a low TSH, lowish TSH, 0.2, lower limit of normal being 0 
a high T4 of 15 and a high T3. She was diagnosed to have uh, hyperthyroidism because of raised T3, raised T4, and a low TSH, and started on antithyroid drug, methimazole, 20 milligrams per day. But six weeks later, she comes back, complaining of weakness and fatigue and uh, hoarseness of voice. And now the thyroid function test has reversed. TSH is 18, T4 6.1, T3 is 90. What should we think of in this case? Well, of course, you could have excessive dose of the antithyroid drugs, making the woman turning her from hyper to hypothyroid. But in clinical practice, that happens uh, rather uncommonly, rather rarely, to have a switchover in such a short interval of time. Of course, at this point of time, a pregnancy test was done because she was already amenorrheic for about 16 weeks, and it was positive. And so we can have all of these thyroid function test changes just by way of the woman being pregnant. Towards the later part of the first trimester, early second trimester, you could have a raised T3, a raised T4, and a rather low TSH without there being actual hyperthyroidism and without the woman needing antithyroid drugs. So we Next, go on to I mean uh, uh, some of the physiological changes which could explain this sort of thyroid function test. One is the increase in thyroxine binding globulin. You know, 60 to 70 percent of the thyroxine is bound by protein thyroxine binding globulin, and that rises in pregnancy because of the effect of estrogen, which not only increases the synthesis but also decreases the degradation of TBG, thereby elevating the TBG level, and thereby the total T4 and the total T3 levels rise from early on in pregnancy till a peak at about, let's say, uh, uh, second trimester, mid-second trimester, and then it uh, plateaus off. And we also know that high levels of HCG early in the early weeks of pregnancy till about, say, the peak levels are reached about 10, 12 weeks, and then it falls, but still, even till about 20, uh, around 15, 20 weeks, the HCG levels are quite high. And HCG being a glycoprotein hormone sharing uh, uh, the alpha subunit with the TSH molecule has a thyrotropic action, has a TSH-like action. So very high levels can stimulate the, thyrox the thyroid causing it to release more thyroxine and which by feedback mechanism will suppress the TSH. So we now get to understand why you could have a raised T3 and a raised T4 and also a low TSH, especially if you're looking at a woman about the end of the first trimester. And this is uh, the HCG also stimulates the th thyroxine production. So it's not just the total thyroxine that's elevated, even the free thyroxine can be a little bit on the higher side in the first trimester. So now we sort of uh, uh, put our knowledge together and therefore not be too sort of uh, prompt in starting an antithyroid drugs. Maybe the first step we should have done is a pregnancy test and then gone on to decide what to do. And this sort of uh, abnormality that we see early on in pregnancy seems to be more common, seems to be more severe in Asian women. This, of course, is a study from England, from Sheffield in England, where they looked at Asian women and also European women and found that suppressed TSH levels were more, more common in the Asian women along with higher HCG and beta HCG and higher free thyroxine levels which suggest maybe, I mean, these were mostly biochemical uh, uh, evidences, but it suggests that maybe Asian women may be a greater chance of developing uh, gestational thyrotoxicosis. Beyond the first trimester, the free thyroid hormones, free T4 and free T3, tend to fall somewhat from the early values, but they in a normal pregnancy, they would mostly remain within the normal range, but could come on the lower side of the normal. This is also something that we need to remember. 
And then there are other physiological changes. There's this increased iodine clearance by the maternal kidneys, which decreases hormone production, and there is a compensatory response. The, th the mother's thyroid tries to overcome by increasing its size, so you can have a small goiter, especially in iodine deficient areas. The placenta has a deiodinase, type 3 deiodinase, which breaks down, which inactivates both T4 and T3. And so the demand for these hormones is more. So again, the maternal thyroid has to work more. And overall, the thyroid volume increases. And because the thyroid activity also increases, serum thyroglobulin level could also be a little bit high in pregnancy. Now let's look at uh, another woman at 16th week she had a thyroid function test which showed a normal TSH, a normal T3, free T3, but a low, lowish free T4. And uh, these days people go on the internet and she was concerned about the implications to her pregnancy because of this isolated hypothyroxinemia. Now we shall come to this. Uh, and, and, and sort of uh, try to understand issues with free thyroxine measurement. As we all understood that because of the elevation in TBG, the total T4 is elevated. And so it sounds uh, sound that it will, we should be getting by our problem by taking recourse to a free thyroxine measurement. Unfortunately, if you use different uh, measures, good measures, chemiluminescence instruments. Here we have, uh, you, th this is a study looking at two different platforms. One is Roche's uh, platform, this is A and B is Tosho's platform. Both are highly rated uh, chemiluminescent assay systems. But if you find in different parts, uh, in different uh, either, let's say if you come to the first trimester of pregnancy or second or third, there is significant difference between the normal levels of free uh, thyroxine levels. And then there, there have been various other studies uh, to look at the free hormone levels on different assay systems and they have come up with different results. And, but overall, the values tend to be lower than what would be expected from normal physiological state. The explanation is not very well understood. But it may partly be related to the increased levels of TBG, which are maybe binding more of the uh, uh, thyroxine, so the free hormone levels are, uh, tend to be on the lower side. And so if we want to do a free hormone uh, uh, assay, it should be by proper equilibrium dialysis or ultrafiltration followed by an isotope dilution tandem mass spectro uh, spectrometry. However, this is not available to any of us. In, 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 in any clinical setting. And so it has now been found maybe it's, it's better to go back to measurement of total thyroxine itself because the assay is more robust and maybe we need to extrapolate the values that we get by remem remembering that the values could be about one and a half times higher in pregnancy uh, than in non-pregnant individuals. And of, of course, TSH value is quite helpful, especially after the first trimester. In the first trimester, as we understood, the TSH can be quite low because of the high levels of HCG and may not give us correct picture of the uh, intrinsic thyroid status of the mother. And then about trimester-specific ranges, we are all aware that the TSH values in pregnancy tend to be lower, at least as far as Western data go, data from US, Europe, which suggests uh, probably the 95th percentile for TSH value in the first trimester is around about 2.5, and the second and third trimester is about 3. And it's also been found that you have more pregnancy losses in women with TSH values, even within 2.5 to 5, which otherwise sounds to be a normal range outside of pregnancy. And so there has been a, a emphasis that we should be looking for this TSH and treating even relatively mild elevations of TSH going by trimester specific ranges. However, are uh, we different? We do not have really big data, but there was a publication from Dr. Marwa in British Journal of Obstetrics and Gynecology, which did suggest that 
maybe our uh, 95th percentile levels may be higher within the first, the second, or the third trimester. We uh, were part of our national study, multicentric study, which is uh, yet to be published uh, with the Indian Journal of Medical Research, where again we, we did find uh, that the mean TSH levels were, and the, that's the first trimester, the second and the third, were actually not that low. So maybe we have to rethink our, our, if we get uh, countrywide data available. And so issues uh, with trimester specific ranges, we have to develop our own data. But it's also very important to follow up the same individual over a period of time rather than rely on any single measurement. And then uh, there are a couple of conditions, hyperemesis gravidarum, which may be associated with a thyrotoxic or hyperthyroid state in pregnancy that we have to keep in mind. And of, of course, also gestational trophoblastic disease because of the very high levels of HCG, you could drive the, uh, uh, the metronal thyroid into an overactive mode and which also needs to be kept in mind in overall assessment of thyroid function. So, Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to conclude by stressing once again the importance of normal thyroid function in pregnancy, reminding ourselves of the physiological changes that occur, including the lowish TSH in the first trimester along with an elevated total T3, total T4 all throughout pregnancy, but with the free values of T3, T4 coming down uh, somewhat uh, in the second and third trimester. while Free T4 can be somewhat erroneous in pregnancy. Possibly we will be better off doing a total T4 once more, and we need to have trimester-specific ranges. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.